Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Working with PHP. In this episode, we are going to learn how to use control statements. So, what is a control statement? A control statement is essentially something that affects the flow of code. Let's say that I'm testing a value or an expression, and if it's true, I want one thing to happen. If it's false, I want something else to happen. At this point, the code will diverge, and there are two possible things that could happen. The body of true, if it's true, everything defined in the body of what is it true, and if it's false, then everything to do when it is false. It's a control statement because we are controlling the flow of the code, basically, you know, how it runs and where it goes. So let's look at a couple of examples. The first and most basic example is an if statement. The if statement takes a condition and checks to see whether it is true or false. So to do this, we want to write the word if parentheses, and then our uh, curly braces. Now inside of the parentheses, this is where we're going to define our condition. So let's go ahead and try, we're going to check to see if greeting is equal to hello. Now when you're checking for equality, you want to use the equal sign two times. We use it one time to assign a value, use it two times to check for equality. So if the greeting is equal to hello, then let's go ahead and echo it is hello. Okay. But let's say we want to check if the greeting is something else. We could write another if statement, but a better way to do this is to use an else if statement. The way that this works is the if statement is tested. If greeting is not hello, it will try a different else if statement. So let's say else if uh, greeting is equal to goodbye. So then we're going to say it is goodbye. So essentially what's happening here is if greeting is hello, then this code will run. It will echo it is hello. Otherwise, if this fails, it's going to try the next else if, and if this evaluates to be true, it will run and say this is goodbye. But what if both of these fail and we want to do something just in case, you know, it doesn't end up working out? We can write an else statement. This does not take, this has no body, or sorry, it has no condition. This is basically if everything else fails, then we'll do this, and we'll say echo it is neither of those things, or whatever you want to write. So let's run through a couple of possible scenarios. Right now, greeting is hello. So this if statement evaluates to be true. Greeting is equal to hello. Therefore, it runs this and echoes it is hello. It skips this else if and else because it already found the condition that's true. It doesn't need to keep checking. If this else if were an if, then it would check but I'm chaining this else if, I'm attaching it to this if so that they are related to each other. And if Safari will open up, I'll just quickly show you that. One second. It will echo out, in this case, it is hello after some of the other stuff that it echoes. There we go. Computer's being a bit slow, but as you can see, it echoes, it is hello. So that obviously works. This e this evaluates to be true. This echo is called. The it is goodbye and it is neither of those things that is never called. So let's say that we try setting this equal to goodbye. Well, the first time this runs in this if statement, greeting is not equal to hello, so it won't echo it is hello. Let's try the next possible case. Greeting is equal to goodbye. This actually evaluates to be true, so it would echo this is it is goodbye. And if I reload this, it will now say it is goodbye. So it's tr it tried this if statement, it failed, so it tried this one and it passed and it worked. But let's say that we set the greeting to be peace. Let's run through. Greeting is not equal to hello, so this if statement won't run. Greeting is not equal to goodbye, so this else if fails. There's no other else if, so we just result to the else. And if I reload this, 
you'll see it is neither of those things is what is printed because these both failed. Note that you don't need to have any else ifs. You could have an if with no else ifs. You also don't need an else. You could have an if by itself. You could have an if and an else, an if, an else, if, and an else, whatever you want to do. But all else ifs require an if because it's, you know, something else to try. And this else re obviously requires an if because if every if all else fails, then this else will happen. I'm saying if and else a lot. I hope that's not confusing. So let's look at another example. The next example we're going to look at is called a while loop. So an if statement will run through one time. If the condition is true, it will, run, it will run the body. If it's false, it'll just ignore it. But what if we want something to happen more than one time? We can use a while loop, and it looks very similar. We have while, we put our condition in the parentheses, and we have brackets. So let's say while greeting is equal to hello. So while the value of greeting is equal to hello, um, we want to echo uh, loop hello. We just want to distinguish that this is inside of a loop. So while this is true, uh, it will echo loop hello. And since we're not changing the value, this would be an infinite loop. It would just keep on going because greeting would always be hello if it's hello here. In this case, it's not hello. This fails, and this will run zero times. If I reload, you'll see that it doesn't work. But if I were to change this to be hello, and I reload, it'll probably have a bit of trouble uh, loading this because it is an infinite loop and I would rather that not actually happen. So let's see if I haven't already broken it. Alright, we'll give that a second. So a loop will happen while the value is true. So in this case, let's say that we set greeting to be goodbye. So what would happen here? If greeting is hello, then it would echo out loop hello, and then it would set greeting to be equal to goodbye. Now, when is a while loop useful? If you're doing something like reading from a file or looking through the results of a MySQL query or something like that where you don't really know how many times it's going to run, that's when you would want to use a while loop. But if you do know exactly how many times you want something to run, like let's say we want... Um, we want something to run 20 times. We want to echo out the numbers between 0 and 19 or 1 and 20, however we want to do this. We can use something called a for loop. It's basically shorthand for a while loop. You could accomplish the same thing um, in a while loop, but it's just a little bit nicer. So there are three parts to a for loop. The first part excuse me, is our initialization. So what we're going to do is a for loop uses something called a counter variable, which will, excuse me, count the number of times this happens. So we'll call it dollar sign, or we'll call it i, because that's the general name. And we're going to start it off at zero, because in programming languages, or most programming languages, you usually like to start off at zero. You could start it off at one if you wanted to. It depends on what you're doing with this loop. So we want to set i is equal to zero. So we've created this counter, and i is going to keep track of how many times this loop runs, which could be helpful. If we want to print out the numbers from zero to 19, then we can just use i instead of writing 20 echo statements. The next part is going to be the condition. So we want to say that i must be less than 20, which means that, let's say i becomes, or no, we'll get to that in a minute. So the condition is, I must be less than 20 in order for this to run. And we're going to write dollar sign $i++, which just means add 1 to i after the body is finished. And here we're going to just simply echo dollar sign $i. So let's just walk through exactly what's going to happen. The first time this runs, the value of i is equal to 0. Is 0 less than 20? Yes. It will run the body of the loop, which will echo 0, and it will add 1. It is now 1. Is 1 less than 20? Yes, it'll echo 1 and add, so now it's 2. Let's skip ahead a little bit. i is now 19. Is 19 less than 20? Yes, it will echo 19, and it will add 1 to i. Now i is 20. Is 20 less than 20? No, so the loop will stop. It's now finished. If you wanted to make it go from 0 to 20, you could add an equal sign, or you could say i is less than 21. Um, but if I were to go ahead and run this, it would print out all the numbers or echo out all the numbers between 0 and 19. Now, this does not seem to be 
cooperating too well. So give me one second to fix that. I might have disrupted it with my loop. Just close the project and open it again. So if we take a look here, we'll now see, um, first of all, let's look at our while loop. Greeting is not hello, so it never echoes out loop hello. Uh, but if we look at our while loop, it does print out the numbers between 0 and 19. Now, there's no spacing or anything that looks a little bit weird, but it does print out the numbers from 0 to 19. We could do this with a while loop if we wanted to, um, but in this case, it's just so much easier to use a for loop. So these are three different types, and these are the three main types of control statements. If statements that test the value and run if it's true, while statements or while loops that run so long as the value is true, and for loops that keep a counter uh, run so long as the counters um, Express the uh, condition is true, and then you know, we keep incrementing the counter so that we can keep track of how many times the loop has run. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys with some more PHP. Bye for now.